Did you hear what I said? You've talked. What did I say? Oh, a lot of things. I no, can't remember. Summarize. Right. Summarize. You, talk, you, you went no. from, summarize. from the moon back summarize. down again. Summarize. Right? Summarize. There's I no don't point that. talking if you don't even hear what I said. What did I say? That's what I said to you. If you talk too long, people no, no. lose interest. What point did I make? Short 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 what point did I make? wisdom, right? You've got to know how to capture the moment. What point did I make? Listen to me. You didn't understand any of my points. You've got, with wisdom, you've got to know how to capture the moment. If you drag on too long, people lose interest. They, they, you start waffling, right? So therefore, capture the moment. Right? Have you ever been to a lecture? People 45 minutes. Yeah, this this gentleman, no, no, no. This gentleman's lecture. argument is, I cannot listen to a 45 minute lecture. You're dictating. It's a waste of time talking to you. Listen, I have, the early accounts aren't reliable. I have explained, I have explained. In other words, you can't give no reasons. I have given my reasons. What was my reasons? Jesus did not die. What were my reasons? We have proved that Jesus died. Really? Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Matthew was there. Who's right. Matthew? Okay. Who's Matthew? Who's Matthew? Who's Matthew? <laughs> Matthew is Matthew. Matthew. John is John. What's his second name? What's his second name? Do you want me to tell you the colour of his shoes as well? No. What's our last second name? What's I want to know who he is. What's do you want to tell you the who is this person? What is his last second name? Okay. So we just tell me our second name. Were the disciples of Jesus ordinary fishermen, people, or literate people? His mother was there. The Romans were there. They're the ones that crucified him. Did you hear my question? The Romans were there. They're were the disciples see, look, of Christ? I'm trying, trying to give him yeah. evidence. Literate? Trying to give him evidence, yeah. right? My dad wouldn't listen. Just talk over. Just talk over. You see what I'm saying? Talk, 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 the Romans were there. They're the ones that crucified him. The Jews were there, right? They're the ones that prompt the Romans to crucify him, right? Historians were there around that time. Which ones? Huh? Which ones? Off my head. I haven't got that knowledge, but off my head, I can't tell you. They're all unreliable because of the lateness. So his mother was there. There's the soldiers were there. Do you have an account from my mother? Do you have an account from my mother? I'm going to history books. I can't. I'm going to history books. It's a historical claim you're making, right? I've got the history books with me. Listen, I can't go into that. You're making. Listen to me now. You said what you want to say. You didn't ask my question. Okay, your evidence then. Your evidence. I've told you my evidence. Well, you can't give me evidence that he did Your evidence, I'll tell you why it's insufficient. I'll tell you why. All you can say is that, oh. Let me have the right to respond. All you can say is, oh, Islam came 200 odd years later. Later, right? And okay, uh, Muhammad wanted to come up with some kind of religion. Oh, right, okay. The, the Muslims, we didn't have nothing, right? Christians and Jews, they've got a book. Oh, come on. I want to have a book as well. That's what he came up with. As he was going around from caravan to caravan, trading or whatever, he's hearing stories, right? Let me give you a point. In one thing, even inside the cave, right? Gabriel, that's what they say, talk to Muhammad. What proof have they got as Gabriel spoke? Why would he conflict two messages, right? Why? You know what I'm saying? Issues like that, we really don't want to go into, right? So therefore, right, the foundation of Islam is this floor. The building can only stand up, right? So therefore, the first revelation, a spirit, a spirit itself, right, has to have a body to come into this existence. A spirit. You're talking about the historical crucifixion, right? And you're doing exactly. all this waffling, right? Exactly. Fine. We're finished now. Now. Prove to me Listen. that Jesus didn't die. So the evidence that you provided that he died was by someone called Matthew. You don't even know who Matthew was. You said he was a disciple. So I asked you a question. Yeah. Were the disciples of Christ literate people? High literate in Greek or Hebrew? Or were they ordinary fishermen, peasants? Some of them fishermen, yeah. He was, he, was tax, he was a tax collector, Matthew. Um, uh, John, was, was he honest? John, oh, come on, man. Oh, you know, you're boring, listen, you know that. Listen, that's, that's a boring argument. When you bring, when you bring, listen. No, no, no. You're, you're listen, 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 you're listen. Me. The reason why you cannot, the, 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 the reason why you cannot handle this Literally. is because it's too much over your head. Hey! I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's my turn to speak. You ask stupid questions. Let me tell you. The question is not intelligence. Listen. You know what? You're asking intelligence. It's my turn to speak. Ask him intelligence. It's my turn to speak. Ask him intelligence. Was um. Matthew, honest. Was he? Was this a difficult question? Okay, now, listen. I'm going to give you a scenario. 
Imagine Let's now. Be Listen, Let's be honest. I am. I am answering. You're answering. You're this, asking in the unintelligent listen, question. Listen. This gentleman comes along in a court of law and he said, "The Quran. This no. is the Quran. Listen. We don't know about here, here, here by saying. Hear him out. Hear him out. Hear him out. Stupid. Right? It's quiz logic. Silly. In a court of law. Silly logic. Brother, listen. In a court of law. What is true for that's are you, Islam are you that's listening? That's an Islamic. 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 That's Come to us, people of the book. It doesn't. You can learn. It doesn't. Read it. Take out your, your book. Kind of Take out your book. I will discuss the subject at hand. Now here. This, no, 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 no. Hello? Take out your Quran. Take it out. They're giving an no? You tell me. You are the one making the claim. You make the claim. You don't make no sense. You establish it. You establish your claim. You establish your claim. The owner is the only one who makes the claim to provide and substantiate with evidence. Islam is a myth. Yeah, I know. It's common sense. That's I mean, it's it's the myth. whole world is realized written by man. People, even your own scholars, right? People, no, scholars, right? Need to substantiate um, the claims um, if they make. Are you even rejecting it? Even um. All right. Okay. So are you finished? Let me, let me ask you a question. Are you finished? Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Hang on, hang on. Are you finished? Out of all the different Qurans you've got, right? Which Quran would you choose to write down? What do you mean different Quran? <laughs> Which one? What do you mean the different Quran? Hafs Quran. Hafs is the Quran. Yeah, the Quran. The Quran. Quran? Yeah. The Rosh Quran? Yeah. Which one would you, just, just those three alone I mentioned, which one would you take? All of them. Medicine? All of them. Yeah. And they all say the same thing? Pretty much so, yeah. You see, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's pretty not, much. Not quite, okay. You heard it from his mouth. No, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You heard it from his mouth, didn't it? Yeah. About pretty much. much. One second, one second. Pretty much. Right. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I'm, I'm going off topic. Right. Sorry. No, sorry, you're sorry, off topic sorry, now. Sorry, so let's topic. return to the subject matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Sorry, sorry. Thank you for acknowledging that. Right. So what I'm saying is, if this gentleman came in a court of law as a witness, now the judge... And what's the point you're trying to make? I'm about to demonstrate that. What's the point you're trying to make? I'm about to demonstrate the point I'm making. So I if you no, only no. listen. So what the point you trying to make? Earlier on, I asked you, yeah. is Matthew honest? Yeah. yeah. The point I was trying and to I make. To you, how much was know? Are you going to let me right. speak? So now you're going to demonstrate. Are you going to let me speak? Demonstrate. Why are you going to interject? Demonstrate. Be a gentleman. Oh, yeah. Thank standing. you. Right. right. Demonstrate to me. I am demonstrating if someone is going to stand forth as a witness, mm -hmm. they need to be credible witness. Credibility of a witness has certain characteristics. This man has to be trustworthy, reliable, of a good character, have, have, have good memory. If, for example, he says, look, I saw with my... Are you listening? Imagine there was a murder happened, for example. For example, come on, man. This wake I need up. to finish the example. example. Just wake up. Come Listen. on, get to the point. If it's you allow me to example. finish, rather example. than making your own judgment, right? Right. It's a poor example. If this gentleman comes in a court of law and he says, I have seen it with my own eyes. Now, you know what the judge and the lawyers and jury will be establishing is? Does he have a good eyesight? Did he actually see it himself? And what color shoes? Wait, wait, wait. What color shoes was he wearing? Are you listening? <laughs> so when a witness is presented to provide testimony and evidence for something, I know what you're talking about. No, you don't. I wasn't That's why yesterday. So uh, come on, get to the point. Okay. So you understand what I'm saying, right? And okay. And it doesn't make any sense of what relating to what we're talking about. Is Matthew honest? Oh. Go on, provide, provide the testimony the that he was honest. Discussion. His discussion was about gay. Did he have good memory? Did he have good memory for what he's recollecting? The Christian sources would probably say that. Who is Matthew? Right? So now you brought a witness called Matthew. You said he was a disciple, right? Fine. I'm going to examine Matthew. The reason why, the reason why I am suspecting Matthew of this honesty. Who else did I say as well? Wait, wait. You said some historians which you could not name. John, John, and Okay. Let's start. Let's start with Matthew, brothers, brothers. The reason why I suspect Matthew of dishonesty is not based on dishonesty. 
Allow me to finish. I know Islam's come to reject the Bible. Excuse me. I understand that. Allow so me to. All what you're saying. Allow me to express my view. Right, you expressed it enough. And now. then. Now listen no, to I me have now. not finished. Well, I'll, I'll, allow me to express well, my leave views. Leave I'm going to start. Yeah. And now, allow me to finish. Allow me to. Why is he dishonest? Why is he dishonest? Thank you. That's precisely what I was about to go next. But the reason why you interject. Why is he. Are you going to allow him to speak? Are you going to allow him to speak without interjecting? But don't bore me. Okay, carry on. If you're bored, that's your problem, not mine. Okay, you're chatting too much. Thank you. Now, Matthew's, Matthew's dishonesty, let me give you some examples of dishonesty. Are you listening? He's not listening. You're boring me. I'm listening. You're literally boring me. See you later. Anyone else wants to know Matthew's dishonesty? No, I don't know. I, I, I take a different uh, tack. Like, I'm not a Christian, as you know. I know. Okay, like, no, I'm going to speak to this brother. Matthew's like dishonesty. The, the, uh, you know, historically, kind of, there seems to be more evidence for a person called Jesus being crucified than him not being It's all crucified. rumors, all rumors. Well, I know. Like, and this, the, and well, if you ask me, I will provide the evidence why this is a rumor. But you could do the same thing about, like, I know. I no, no, we're not talking about, we're not talking about this harbor. We're talking about the claim that is made. So Matthew makes a lot of statements and you can actually decipher that he's making things up. He's lying, distorting, and inventing and fabricating historical information that is already of the past. For example, for example, let me give you some examples. Matthew says, these are the generations, all of them are 14, from Abraham to David, David to the exile to Babylon, and then up to Jesus Christ, right? 14, 14, 14 generations. He says, these are all the generations. He counts them. 42 generations. But if you go into these people that he is giving you the genealogy of, he's missing out a lot of them in between. What if that's a mistake? Uh, no, not a mistake, deliberately. Now let me tell you why he's dishonest. The people that he misses, for example, he misses out Jehoiakim. Right? Jehoiakim. Matthew wants to present Jesus to be the son of David, to sit on the throne of David. So he gives you a genealogy of individuals which he considers to be giving you the right of heir for the throne of David. Within this sequence of people within the genealogy, he takes out Jehoiakim. You might think it's not significant, like you said, it could be a mistake. But if you were to go and read the Old Testament, God says about Jehoiakim and his progeny that none of them will have anyone to sit on the throne of David. So God has already what's it called like withdrawn this right to claim the throne of david anyone who comes from jehoiakim and his progeny so if you have jehoiakim within this lineage it is obviously clear that jesus from that genealogy cannot claim to be the son of david and to be on the throne of david it's shooting yourself on the foot he omits this name so when we examine this kind of, this is page number one of Matthew's Gospel, first page, that how dishonest he was with a theological motive of his dishonesty. And why do I say dishonesty? Because he's twisting historical information and saying these are only 14 generations when they're more than 14. This is from page one. If you go into more and more examples, you'll realize how he's making things up. He's twisting and fabricating, and we've done that enough time. I mean, if you ask even Paul, for example, we've done it together, demonstrating Matthew's dishonesty of historical narration twisting and, and, and corrupting it. So, as a person who is presented this claim that Christ was crucified based on testimony of Matthew, I have all the reason to suspect that this man is not giving you the right information because he is theologically biased. He's perhaps, you know, ideologically biased from his own ideology that he holds and various other biases that come in. So to get actual information, I would say 
you have to take with a pinch of salt. So we don't discount history, we can use what we call methodological neutrality. Stand from that position and assess and see what the evidence presents to you. When we find this evidence, his credibility is in question. What else do we have? We have aren't there secular sources. That secular that, sources are late. Yeah, aren't, aren't there like historians who are secular who still think that there's more evidence that do you know why? Jesus was do you know why secular historians like, believe in the death of Christ because of their supposed naturalism? The supposition of naturalism because what happens is this if you are alive now you have to die that's what the reality of experience of, of, of human beings and so on they can't believe that god intervened and took it off in heaven no. that is the bias of naturalism oh, that is why is that they will no, take no, those no no hang on i let me finish you can speak okay, okay. that is why they would have no quarrel they would have no quarrel in accepting in accepting these stories okay but like you're saying that these other historians have a bias of naturalism no, no, so that when you modern historians i'm modern historians okay these modern historians have a bias of naturalism other historians so that they they assume that people die but the thing is though like they wouldn't necessarily assume that someone died by crucifixion the fact that they're sort of believing that someone was crucified that kind of gives them reason to believe that this person would have died from crucifixion because like what, what do you have more evidence for we have lots of evidence of people being crucified and dying from crucifixion we don't really have any other recorded pieces of evidence for us to believe that when people are crucified they get like teleported to heaven where and then have someone replace it on the, the, on the cross. Say, the Quran does actually say, whether or not you believe it's revelation, that it was made to appear that it was crucified. So, in fact, the Quran affirms that kind of understanding. It's not denying, in that sense, the appearance of crucifixion. It was made to appear that he was... Uh, it's denying that in the majority view, although there is actually, within the Zanat, there's different views on what the Quran actually says. It appears to be saying that he appeared to have died, that he wasn't. Now, if one rejects any kind of datum from the divide, not just from the horizontal, but from the vertical as well, as naturalistic historians do, then you're going to be left with that. But if you do actually believe there is datum from Revelation, then in a holistic understanding of life, the universe and everything, you're going to take it into account. But Western historiography is consistently naturalist in its uh, presuppositions. So it will exclude any datum that doesn't come from a this worldly source. Now, you can do that, a fair Jew, if you want to do it, it's fine. But you don't have to have that view, and religious people choose not to be Okay, so Muslims and Christians believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. Ah, but you say, we've never ever heard of one more uh, bringing about a virgin birth before, therefore it didn't happen. Well, that's a philosophical assumption. It's actually a prejudice against the facts. But the facts may be actually that the divine did create a virgin birth, just so happens, on this one amazing, unique occasion. Would so, it, it be fair to say what you're calling a bias is actually, or could, you could also call it empiricism? Okay, yeah, so that, that means like believing in things based on evidence. And that's kind of a rational way to go about things. That's how we spend most of our but, lives. But it's a methodological bias. It's a methodological bias. And, and it's not, ultimately, no. you can't prove that only science, for example, is the only criterion of truth. Because science can't tell you that. That is a, uh, uh, an assumption that you bring to the scientific method. Uh, oh, this is the only truth we accept. Muslims and Christians and Jews say, well, there's truth and empiricism. But also there's other layers of dimensional truth which also feed into understanding of reality. So there's an assumption here, which is a philosophical one, which people are entitled not to accept. Okay, like, I mean, any, so, let, I'm, I'm not going to assume that the world is entirely natural. I'm not going to say, like, kind of, you know, this is what, how I'm going to start looking at the world. But for any given uh, account of the supernatural, any given piece of scripture, like, I think it's reasonable to ask what are the reasons to believe that this scripture really is from God rather than a product of man. And so, if a piece of scripture is making some claims about things that happened, uh, you know, hundreds of years before that piece of scripture was, um, 
uh, you know, formed or brought into the world, and also the claims of that piece of scripture sort of contradict, uh, you know, earlier sources, then we, we, need, we would need to first establish that this piece of scripture, that there is some reason to believe that this piece I, I, of scripture okay, is from God. Everything you said, and I, I completely agree okay. with you. The problem so, is that the Gospel of Matthew, if we're talking about that Gospel of Matthew, does not claim to be scripture, revelation, inspired by God, given by... Can any of that? Yeah, not, in not, fact, not, neither yeah. does anything, uh, with the possible exception of the last book of the Bible, claim to be inspired by God. So we're not dealing with something that the author of Matthew thought was scripture, or indeed anyone any of his contemporaries thought was scripture. Only much later generations decided, oh, now we're, we're, we're now going to give it that canonical statement to inspire word of God. They didn't claim that. Now, most of them may claim uh, uh, that their scripture, it, 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 it does say to be a scripture and inspired. So you're, you're dealing with apples and oranges, like and unlike here. You can't equate a man-made scripture, a man-made text that doesn't claim to be scripture with revelation that does claim to be. You're dealing with different, different or, 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 Yeah, yeah. I, w I wasn't trying to claim that uh, the book of Matthew was scripture. Claim to be scripture. Yeah, yeah. I, w I wasn't trying to make that claim. But I mean, so uh, let's try and get back to the original point. Like, I, I, I sort of feel that, um, you know, historically there are kind of secular historians, but, uh, by, by which I mean kind of people who aren't sort of, uh, you know, um, Christian in their worldview. But uh, there are still historians who think that uh, historically there's more reason to believe that someone called Jesus was crucified. And because I think that, one of the sources. Because that's what they have. The rumors is what they have. The sources they used to infer that is like, I think, Josephus. Like, I've yeah. heard this name be Josephus, brought forward. But Josephus wasn't a witness of the current crucifixion anyway. I mean, he was a Roman. He became a Roman historian, he lived in Rome, he wasn't a, a, but a witness. But if, if, he, if he's recording this account, then doesn't, he had that, mean, doesn't that mean that the account was in, in circulation at the time? According like to the Quran, if you were there, according to the Quran, just to get run with this argument for a second, say you were there uh, in 1830, and according to the Quran, what would you have seen? According to the Quranic narrative about the Christmas of Jesus, what would you have seen according to the Quran? It was made to appear like that. So would said. you have seen the crucifixion or not according to the Quran? Yeah, crucifixion. Right. What do historians, centuries, thousands of years later, what do they recall? The, the crucifixion. crucifixion. Exactly. Oh. So the, the, and they, and they the believe that narrative the actually Jesus. endorses that perspective in some kind of weird way. It's okay. Sure okay. But it means, but it means though that the only reason to believe that Quran narrative is if you have reason to believe that the Quran is from God. That's and my so, position. It may not be a position okay. of other people, but that's my position. So is, is, there any reason, is there any reason to believe that Jesus was not crucified other than if you believe that the Quran is from God? Remember the, the gentleman I spoke to earlier, I said this part A and part B to the question. Right. Part A was that Quran is the divine revelation and, it and it's the source that. of ultimate truth, right? right? But of course, he doesn't agree with that divine revelation, but he right. in principle he agrees divine revelation should be the source of ultimate truth. But then I moved on saying the evidence that is presented that someone was crucified is at best a well attested rumor. That is what the Quran is saying. People perceive that this perception of crucifixion took place and Jesus was crucified. And the Quran then immediately afterwards says he wasn't killed or crucified, but God took him up. So the perception was there, which led the rumor of the people and the historians to narrate this information. But a miraculous thing that happened, that God saved him. That is why it is unique that God, knowing that this perception was around... There were some early Christians, by the way, who didn't think Jesus was crucified. Mm. There were some Christians in the first century who didn't think... You might not know this. I, I think I've heard of that book. The, the facilities, as they are called, not known by autistic scholars, um, were a group of Christians who didn't believe Jesus was crucified. So it's actually even wrong to say all Christians believe Jesus was crucified. I'm not saying that's evidence for the non crucifixion uh, Jesus. Just saying that some person who didn't believe Jesus was crucified, uh, they believe someone else was crucified. Because I mean, there are, on Simon they, and Cyrene. They, they on balance, there's more. We, is there more evidence supporting that a crucifixion yeah. took place that, was, that the people yeah. around thought was of Jesus? If I was a secular historian, obviously within that limitation of the appearance of crucifixion, I would go with that. Okay. I mean, it depends on how you're coming at this issue and what you limit your frames of reference to. Okay. If you go it's purely secular to the appearance, then you're going to conclude, of course, as a naturalist, that Jesus must have been crucified. If you have other data from other sources which are even more reliable, which is the Muslim argument, then of course you're going to accept that. You're going to upgrade your 
create credibility to something more solid. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. So, especially if it's a matter of faith. Matter of faith. Do you believe the client? That's how I see. Do you believe the client's word of God or not? Now you're an atheist, by the way. We should be discussing. Oh, are you an agnostic? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty good. Thank you. Are you? You've moved a lot along to a bit more. That's good. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not sure. Last but time we two Yeah, that is a development. That is an internal I mean, development, right? I mean, I, I've always been of the opinion that, you know, I'm not sure whether or not God exists. So maybe some people say atheism is a lack of belief in God. So if you don't take a position, that would kind of be an atheist, according to some people, even though the original meaning of atheist was disbelieving in God. Yeah. But I mean, you know, uh, it, it, it can get a bit confused, the yeah, terminology. But, it, but if you're in a position where you don't know possibility exists, that God exists, and there's a possibility, right, exactly. then that's not atheism, that's agnosticism. Sure. That is a, 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 you know, a strong move forward compared to a total rejection of God, which is like yeah. a positive claim that God doesn't exist, an, right, atheist, right. You know, an atheism. Yeah, so yeah. this is, this is uh, you know, uh, you know and it's a step that we can discuss further on this issue to demonstrate uh, the case. He was calling you, huh? the cameraman for this. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be there shortly. Um, nice speaking to you and to you. Um, yeah, nice speaking to you as well. Um, unfortunately, the gentleman couldn't um, carry on the conversation.